Vera Kluse discussion and today it's my turn. Uh, I'm moderating this uh, discussion session today. My name is Gesa Lüdecke and I'm the director of graduate programs at the Reggie Carson Center and together with Christoph Mau, who's hopefully coming today, <laughs> I am moderating the TESA discussion during the semester and we're alternating so I'm doing a session today and a session next week. And after that, in two, two weeks from now, Christoph is taking over again and so on. So this is how the semester will go. And I'm uh, extremely excited that we could win Susanna Eda for today's TESA discussion. Susanna Eda is a psychologist and uh, with a focus on organizational and work psychology. And she studied in Vienna, in Montevideo, Uruguay, yeah. and Erlangen. And she's also worked as a, a journalist and a writer, as far as I know. Maybe you can talk a bit about that later on. This is Christoph Mau. <laughs> there he is. Um, and she's uh, actually been intrigued in how far the arts, and especially, I remember that correctly when we talked, the, 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 the dance and performing arts, and how far they actually contribute to innovations and changes in society. So regarding sustainability or environmental issues. So and how far can dance and physical movement change our perception of the world? She's currently working for the Strasek Center for Entrepreneurship, which is affiliated with the Hochschule München. Um, and she's also a team member of the Munich Global Impact Sprint, which you can see here. Um, and with or as part of the Munich Global Impact Sprint, Susanna is bringing together students, startups, established companies and industrial corporations in Munich and beyond, from, from abroad also, um, to uh, kind of collaborate on, so to say, impactful in innovations regarding sustainable, the sustainable development goals. So how can you bring together companies, corporations and students in a co-creating process to actually develop uh, processes that um, feed into the sustainable development goals? So as we all know, the industrial corporations are the ones that have the biggest environmental footprint. And um, I think now, today, and the, for the next two weeks, the Glasgow Climate uh, Conference is going on. And I'm personally not very um, optimistic that we'll uh, have any big changes coming out of that, especially regarding industrial corporations. But maybe we'll learn something totally different from you today. So I don't know. But um, so industrial corporations have done quite a lot in the past couple of years to work towards the climate goal uh, that was set in, uh, in Paris in 2015. Um, but at the same time, of course, they haven't done enough. That's what we all know. I would be interested to hear from you um, personally how you think or what you think or how you perceive actually corporations um, in, in, in the connection with sustainable development goals, what they think about these de sustainable development goals and how far they actually think they can contribute to that, and then how far in the next coming years they want to change their processes, their structures towards climate neutrality, which I think is a really big thing <laughs> if that happens. Okay, I'll stop here and I'm very happy that we could win you for today and um, we're really uh, happy to get insights from you about the project, about the Munich Global Impact Sprint. And everyone, please uh, join me in welcoming Susanna Eda. Well, very big questions that you raised in the beginning. <laughs> um, I hope we'll get close to and well, not answer maybe, but yeah, circulate around those questions. And I hope that this input about the Munich Global Impact Sprint um, adds to the discussion. So the idea is, I think, as in all Tuesday talks, I'll give hopefully only 10 minutes of input, and then we have enough time to discuss. And also, please ask critical questions. Um, if you didn't understand anything, feel free to, <laughs> to just speak openly. Okay, I'm Susanna, as Giza already said, working at the Strasek Center for Entrepreneurship, which is part of the Munich Global Impact Sprint team. And our program, as you already introduced, is all about co-creation. So our claim is co-creating tomorrow's sustainable businesses. And the program itself is also a co-creation effort. So as you see here in the bottom, we are seven organizations working together. So that is a <laughs> co-creation project itself. So the three big universities, the LMU is also part of it. They're entrepreneurship centers, so the LMU, the University of Applied Sciences, and also the Technical University have entrepreneurship centers like ours. 
I'm working here on the left one, SCE. And we partnered up with uh, the MOOC Summit GmbH, which is like our ecosystem integrator, as we call them. And yes, those seven organizations are trying to bring alive the MJS, which is the acronym for Munich Global Impact Sprint. And maybe also to explain our logo, the three colors represent the three universities. And um, so the, in the middle, we all meet and that's the MJS. So we call it a program focusing on ecosystem connections to co-create impact-driven ideas. So what does that mean? Basically, the NJS is a six-month program, a sprint, as we say, but um, basically the, the program is about co-creation, about networking and about capacity building. So we invite international teams and also individual talents from all over the world, but also from the regions. We invite them to Munich now, obviously also virtually, but the idea originally was that they would physically be in Munich um, to be part of this ecosystem and to, to co-create together with, as you said, industrial companies, but also, and that's very important, with the political sector and the civil society sector, but that's also again a, a challenge to bring so many different sectors together that, and and co-create with each other. So it's a challenging program. We, we started um, a year ago. I joined in January, so I think we're already um, one and a half years now um, in total, and I'm there for, for almost a year now. Okay, so what's the program about? Uh, basically, we invite teams who want to put co-creation at the heart of their innovation progress, process, so teams that are interested to reach out to other companies to other players in the in the ecosystem and and who want to share the ideas and to try to make the ideas better by working together with other people and the idea is that they would come to munich and use those uh, opportunities of munich i think you already said that we have a lot of big companies here in munich and um, this is also a great chance to say that that we would together uh, work on the sdgs and to to create ideas that actually can change something so the, ec the ecosystem in Munich, as you said, it's interesting that we always talk about this ecosystem. What is it about? So the idea is we have strong universities here. We have a lot of industrial companies here. And we also have a strong impact driven NGO sector in Munich. And we want to bring those together and connect them with good ideas to, to make ideas grow. Um, which is also important here, the tech for good. So the technical university is also part of it and that's what they mainly focus on to say we can use technologies, we can use um, AI, etc., cetera, to, to really make a change. And yes, that's the one on the left side, no tuition. So if you ever want to join the MJS, it's a free program. So it's actually something where we got, a, um, got financed by the um, the government to, to, to follow this program and hopefully after the funding ends we will have a sustainability um, approach ourselves to, to obviously be able to continue the program. Again maybe to this uh, idea of coming together that's actually something that's also very new and very unique that the three universities as you probably can imagine we're actually uh, competitors <laughs> in a way i know we have different focuses but but yeah we attract students so so that's also something quite special i think that the entrepreneurship centers and the universities come together to really have a program together and that requires a lot of trust work also um, because in the end this idea of being competitors kind of comes through every now and then uh, on some level, um, but in the idea is that we have three different focuses also in the program to not really um, yeah, come across with uh, in a bad way. So the technical university is focusing on tech entrepreneurship, the LMU is, has their research focus in the program and the University of Applied Sciences where I'm coming from is focusing on co-creation. So actually the inputs also we give to the teams, the capacity building workshops, they also focus on that issue. So what we work with the teams and talents with is, is focusing on co-creation, etc. And yeah, together, this is kind of showing off how many students and professors and alumni, etc. we have. So I won't go into this, but it's, it's obvious that it's a big opportunity that actually those big institutions come together, together and share their strengths and share their expertise, etc. But it's also a possible downside because we have to communicate a lot with each other also to make that work. 
Okay, so um, a short uh, slide on on what really happens in this sprint. So um, we talked about, about co-creation a lot. And as we understand it, it's actually bringing together those teams with, with people working in companies, with people working in NGOs, in other startups, to really connect them, to network, and to work on, on challenges together with each other. So we have those, we call them target labs, where we invite potential partners and collaborators to meet teams um, and talents. We always focus on different topic areas. So in, we have a target lab on food, on health, uh, on cities and communities, and on um, production and consumption. That's the fourth one. We want to add more, obviously, but we, uh, we're trying to, to start with the most, well, the most general ones in a way that we have a lot of expertise in, and then we, we will build that up. So the idea is to, to connect people from the industry sector who are focusing on food, for example, and match them with other teams and talents who are working on the challenges they might have in their big corporation. Um, so those are the target labs. Then we have a purpose module that's based on the LMU. Maybe the Rachel Carson Center can get involved here. So we want to make the to get the teams impact ready. So they have an own module focusing on that aspect, because basically we we invite impact driven teams, as we always say. But we're also OK with the teams only being open to impact yet, but not actually having a strategy where we would say, OK, that's 100 percent sustainable. And the idea is to we can we can address more teams if we say, OK, we need you to work on those issues, but you don't need to be impact ready right from the start, because that's something we want to develop also in the program. Then we have the real time innovation module. That's a new innovation method we came up with from the Strasik Center and then University of Applied Sciences. So we teach the teams how to use this innovation method to, to improve their idea and their product. And I already said that about Tech for Good, that's more the technical university. I guess they would go into big detail here, but they have workshops focusing on that topic. And that's a more general point. Munich, that's a bit of a pain at the moment because obviously we can't invite the teams here and they're based everywhere in India and USA and uh, every country you can imagine um, but they can't come here yet um, but that's also a big chance because we we um, we would obviously not be able to invite them for six months and offer that program that we have now virtually where we're way more flexible and so it's also a, a good thing. Um, Okay, that's just a short slide that's more focusing on our ecosystem integrator. I already said that we have the universities, the entrepreneurship center and the ecosystem integrator because the idea is, or the idea was that we need some kind of neutral organization that's also partnering already with a lot of uh, big companies um, out of the industry sector, mainly focusing on the industry sector and the idea is that the universities and centers also bring in other partners that they are working with. Um, and I don't know if the city of, yeah, this, this slide is focusing more on the, the organizations. And I think the next slide, yeah, that's also focusing on this, uh, what the ecosystem is about. So uh, we call it the Munich Innovation Ecosystem, as you said already, um, in short, must. It's a, not the best acronym because must would actually mean something different. But anyway, that <laughs> it's as it is. Um, so yeah, that's the idea to have this big ecosystem built up by um, um, established companies. That's the organization MOOC Summit GmbH that brings in the organizations. Then we bring the startups from the center. So we obviously have a lot of connections to startups and teams and talents, talented talents interested in this uh, startup world um, and yeah we also have partners or, um, from the political and civil society sector that we also bring into the ecosystem. Um, what else can I say? Yeah and this match up point even though it's here in the left and the bottom that's a really important and crucial question that we also haven't actually answered 100% because obviously we're bringing together a lot of different people that 
we think have the potential to work with each other, but actually this real matching, that's something we're still working on. So we have a platform called the InnoSabi platform. I can send you the link afterwards um, where people can sign up and also post challenges. So a big corporation could post some challenge they're facing regarding the SDGs, for example, and then a startup could look at those challenges and, and maybe adapt their product in a way or start reaching out to them and say, ah, actually, we have an idea which is kind of focusing on what you need. Maybe we could work together. But this is something really complicated because the match has to be, yeah, 100% right, actually kind of like in a Tinder situation <laughs> to really work. And it's something we still... We still have to learn from Tinder, basically, or Bumble, and that you might also know. Okay, but that's the idea to, to get better with that, with every sprint that we have. Actually, I don't know how much time I talked already. 12 minutes. Oh, okay, perfect. So I wanted to focus on the, on the questions a lot and don't take too much time to talk myself so you can ask the questions that you really find interesting because I'm not quite sure about how much you know already about this whole world of startups and how they, what they look for, etc. So please also feel free to ask very, uh, maybe, well, not stupid questions, but like new questions. What is a startup or <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I put a few questions here that I would find very interesting from you as an audience. Um, so I put the first one, what does co-creation mean to you? I think it's a very, very big a word that can mean a lot and for us it means more or less what I have explained now in the last 12 minutes um, but I think it can mean a lot more you already said about my interest in um, dance and innovation and how to bring the art sector more into this whole innovation management um, topic so yeah that's what, uh, that's what, I, what I found find very interesting the second question I put what do you think we need to enable what do you think we need ah, sorry what do you think we need to enable co-creation and collaboration across sectors and within societies so that's something I would also be very interested in your perspective um, and also the perspective from the Rachel Carson Center because it's it's a challenge to there's a reason why the sectors work quite separately from each other now and it's a challenge bringing them together and I think we're always welcome to get feedback on that and uh, where, do, where do, you, do you see opportunities and risks to foster impact-driven innovation towards achieving the SDGs? So that's also a very broad question. <laughs> a broad question. And I put this word risk here as well. I think uh, in the startup sector, we're all always very positive about things and very optimistic. But I think there's also a risk um, from especially big industrial corporations to say, we're working in the SDGs and then in the end, Maybe it's not adding so much to the idea that we actually all want to follow. So there's, those are my questions, but maybe you have some very basic ones in the beginning also to the presentation. And yeah. Thank you so much.